Joining me now is Devin Hansen. He's the author of Guts, the Lane Evans story. Devin, welcome to the Young Turks. Hello, thank you for having me. No problem. All right, so let's get right into it. For folks who don't know, who's Lane Evans? Well, you know, that's the thing. He's a very little known progressive populist who came into Congress in 1982. You know, he started the populist caucus. In 82 with Barbara Boxer, in 92 he started the Progressive Caucus with uh, Bernie Sanders. And uh, he was just a, a dude that um, passed a lot of uh, progressive uh, bills and he, he didn't get any credit for it. And uh, you know he was okay with that because he was just a real humble dude. And, and um, he, uh, as we see here on the, the screen, he helped, also helped uh, Barack Obama get elected to the Senate in 2003. Um, you know, he was just uh, a, a, a big warrior for the progressive movement that didn't get a lot of credit. So, Devin, uh, I have a theory on why he didn't get a lot of credit. Because if uh, an established Democrat had been the first to endorse Obama for the Senate seat, uh, there'd be a lot of to do about that, right? People would, wouldn't would stop talking about it. Uh, prescient, courageous, etc. cetera. Uh, but when you fight for progressives, the media seems to generally hate you, so they'll make giant events out of tiny little things when an establishment candidate does it. But this guy could conquer mountains, and not going to get any press over it. Yeah, it's it's like um, you know he was one of the first guys to stick his neck out for Obama. I mean, um, you know, here in Illinois, you know, going down to downstate Illinois, there's. It's a pretty conservative area, and um, Lane was really well respected down there. So he kind of showed Obama the ropes, and you know, you know, Obama he he can talk to anybody and and really uh, cut through all the uh, <clears throat> he he can uh, appeal to a lot of voters, and you know, Lane introduced him to a lot of people, and you know, nobody wanted him to uh, endorse Obama, and. Um, even to this day, Obama remembers that. You know, he says, "I wouldn't be president without you." Uh, he really showed him how to appeal to these uh, swing voters here in the uh, Rust Belt. So Lane Evans was actually in a swing district, wasn't he? So if if he's one of the top progressives in the country, one of the co-founders, as you pointed out, the Congressional Progressive Caucus with Bernie Sanders, well. Uh, you know, conventional wisdom says that uh, progressives can't win in uh, swing districts. So what happened? How did he win in those districts? Yeah, you know, that's uh, that, that's the awesome thing about him. Um, you know, in these swing districts, uh, you know, everybody's kind of pointing their fingers, uh, putting their fingers to the wind, seeing where the polls go, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes down to it, they would rather have a voter, or I'm sorry, a uh, a congressional representative that sticks to their principles and um, you know really it inspires the electorate. You know that they don't formulate their opinions based on corporate donors, et cetera, et cetera. They um, see what they see it not as left versus right, but they see it as uh, top versus bottom, and uh, they, they formulate their messages to um, the electorate. Uh, so that <clears throat> that they understand that this isn't just a, a Republican versus a Democrat issue, or uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, so Devin, uh, now let's talk about the depressing state of the 17th district of Illinois because it went from a progressive champion representing to who? I'm sorry. Who, who now represents that district? Lane Evans, of course, passed away in 2014. So who now yeah. represents that district? Yeah, right now we have Sherry Bustos. And you oh. know, as, as you know, she uh, rep, uh, she's the head of the DCC. And she got that um, position because she won a so-called Trump district uh, with 20 uh, points. But you know, this, this is a district that voted Obama um, twice and then voted um, Trump with less than 1% uh, of the vote, and you know the people that um, she was going against, it was uh, Bill Falwell, 
and he he thought uh, Sandy Hook was a false flag. He thought 9-11 was a conspiracy. So, you know, it, it's easy to win a district when you're going against somebody like that. That doesn't get the Republican National Committee behind them. It doesn't get local Republicans behind them. Um, you know, a banana could have won this district as a Democrat. Uh, I I often say and that's an amazing history. I have to confess that I didn't know that it was Sheriff Bustos' seat. So here's uh, Sheriff Bustos for the, those of you at home who don't know uh, is arguably one of the most corporate Democrats uh, there is in Congress now. She's the one who targets progressives and spends a lot of money to try to defeat them. And her job is to protect incumbents, no matter how conservative they are. So she'll uh, back uh, Cuellar. Even though he votes with Trump 70% of the time, she'll back Lipinski, even though he's anti choice and and in, was against Obamacare. It, the list goes on and on and on. So, uh, aides and abets, the worst kind of corporate Democrats. And that seat was held by a progressive giant. So, uh, and then they make it seem like, oh, no one could have won that seat but Sherry Bustos, the corporate Democrat. No, a progressive giant had won that seat 12 times. Right. In fact, it, uh, wasn't he at one point named Ronald Reagan's number one foe? Yeah, I mean, the minute he got into office, I mean, he beat a ten-term Republican, and the minute he got into office, he was uh, designated as the number one foe of Reagan. I mean, he was just uh, voting all his uh, principles; he was voting what was right rather than what was uh, politically expedient, and he continued that for his twelve terms in uh, Congress, and that's what people around here really respected. You know, they they wanted to see somebody that was anti-establishment, that was really voting from their heart. Rather than you know uh, letting the corporate uh, interests formulate or you know come up with the uh, issues that were big for them, but um, you know and also Sherry, you know she beat two guys, uh, Harlan and Falwell. Harlan he um, he asked the electorate here to <laughs> pray to the Holy Spirit that he would win. Falwell. I just saw him in a parade last week in the Labor Day parade, and he literally had <laughs> poster boards um, made with magic markers. I mean, these guys spent like nineteen thousand dollars on their campaigns, and they had no uh, support of the national committees. And 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 here we are electing somebody to the DCC because she won a Trump district. But it, it, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's really ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, the part of the story I like is that the Holy Spirit was like, eh, I don't think so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, everybody check out the book because there's so much more. Uh, you know, he turned down all um, of the salary increases that Congress got, died penniless, by the way. I mean, to, totally giving a guy. Uh, you know, we brag about how the Just Democrats invented no corporate PAC money, right? But he was not taking corporate money or lobbyist money way before we quote unquote invented that. So uh, everybody check out the book, Guts, the Lane Evans story, uh, Devin Hansen. Thank you so much for joining us, we appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Like what you see, click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another video from the Young Turks.